George de la Tour, The Penitent Magdalene, 1638-43, Oils on Canvas. George de la Tour, a painter from eastern France, the Duchy of Lorraine, who lived from 1593 to 1652, is not an artist who much is known about. His history is a bit sketchy at times in many aspects, like his early trainings remain largely undocumented. Much is known, however, about the level of fame he garnered during his life. He was the main painter in the courts of French king for some time, and also painted numerous works for aristocracy. However, his religious work and even some of his more secular scenes were more often purchased and commissioned by the middle class. His work was very popular. He rose to prominent among his peers, though documentation points to, to the fact that his output was quite large. What survived is sadly a small number of works. De La Torre's style was very much in the Baroque styles of Italian Michelangelo Morisi, known more fam famously as Caravaggio. Though whether De La Torre studied in Italy was, and was thus exposed to Car Caravaggio's work, or if promulgations of Caravaggio's of Utrecht school in northern countries exposed the French artists, the influence of Caravaggio's is evident in the dramatic lightning, strong contrast of color, and the lack of idealizations of female figures. The Magdalene is not shown as beautiful woman or in an idealized form. Rather, she is portrayal of regular features and common looks. However, De La Tour's most beautiful technique is the simplification of forms. There are no grand gestures or intricate details. His work shows a remarkable constraint not often seen, seen in the early modern French art. The shape of woman, her desk, and even the skull is pared down to basic basic to allow the other two elements of the work, such as strong contrast of light, to speak for it. The constraint is powerful in its relevance of emotional sentiments or feeling. The expression of the subject is the defining characteristic rather than the grand gestures or minute aspects. The scene is an emphasis of contemplations, whether the Magdalene is shown repenting her past sins or if she is simply pondering on the aspect of Christian religion as they may pertain to her. The painting is simply a portrayal of a woman wandering. Her deep concentration and gaze toward the candle gave, give her an air of seduced and controlled contemplations, a thinker deep in thought. However, her attention is absolutely moved inward. Her gaze on the candle is unseen, as, as if she looks right past it to the mirror behind her. If she is contemplating her reflections, the viewer is left to wonder at what she is thinking of and if is able to take away from the work whatever they please. If the painting's audience is religious, then it would seem that they are viewing the Magdalene's repenting her sins, moving from her lascivious past to a pure future. If the audience is secular, the scroll seems to bring to mind a woman reflecting on death, morality, and brevity of life. The voyeuristic quality this painting has allowed the viewers to insert their own thought into Magdalene's and give the audience a freedom to process moment contemplations on their own worries and vanity.